dear students i welcome you all to my video lecture or online class on paxinia graminis as we had we were studying in our previous class this is also one of a pathogen fungal pathogen which cause disease in various economically important plants today we are studying taking an example of paxinia graminis and we are going to study about the rust disease which it cause in case of wheat so let us start with this particular class before going in detail about this rust disease what why it is called as rust as you could see in this particular image you can see as you could see what uh, you can see some pustules i think you could see some reddish brown pustules which has been formed on the surface of the infected part of the plant the color is reddish brown and the powdery mass in this particular pustules or on the blisters which has been formed on the infected part of the plant look like as though it is like a rust see i think you would have seen the rust iron rusting isn't it the color of that rust will be exactly like this hence because of the appearance of the visible pathogen on the surface of the leaf which looks like a the rust powder this rust powder here it is nothing but the accumulation of a particular kind of spore called as uridospore hence because of the symptom which it looks like that of a rust hence that this is is called as rust disease there are about 300 genera there are around 300 genera in the fungi in the kingdom fungi which causes rust diseases most of them most of them belongs to the subdivision basidiomyces they belongs to the subdivision basidiomyces the characteristic feature of this basidiomycetes is the production of a spore called as basidiospore you go students you can make a note of that basidiospore is an important characteristic feature of basidiomycotina around there are 300 genera has been already identified till date which causes rust disease in various economically important plants some of the dominant group of rust disease causing fungi has been listed out over here students kindly note the different dominant species dominant genera under i mean rust disease causing organisms are paxinia paxinia is one of the dominant group of fungi which causes rust disease followed by uromyces radinilia species etc and among these as i was mentioning paxinia is one of a dominant organism which causes the rust disease in various group of organism but there are few species dominant species i am going to talk about paxinia graminis remember students paxinia graminis paxinia recondita paxinia striformis they can ask in your competitive examination to match the kind of rust you can come across in wheat paxinia graminis causes black rust of wheat remember black rust of wheat paxinia recondita brown or orange rust paxinia striformis yellow rust so they will ask you to match black rust orange rust yellow rust in case of wheat the wheat plant may get can get infected with three different species of paxinia which are those graminis recondita striformis it has been classified based basically based on the color however there are various different characteristic feature which made the mycologist to delimit them into different species there is one more uh, recorded video in my uh, youtube channel i think i will give you the link of that youtube channel you can go through that so that i have explained in detail about these three species 
that you can but here i am not going to elaborate this you can see the video which i have which is there in my youtube channel likewise we have paxenia see remember students i have seen in many of the question paper with respect to paxenia graminis reconditus reformis where they may ask you to match black rust which causes graminis causes black rust recondita causes brown or orange rust striformis causes yellow rust respectively paxenia arachidis causes rust in case of brownets paxenia helianthi causes rust in case of sunflower milamspora lini causes rust in lenses likewise you have euromyces species which causes rust in beans as well as in gram and another important species kindly note this is also i have seen this particular question in many of the competitive examination hemilia vasatrix hemilia vasatrix hemilia coffee cola which causes rust in case of coffee these are the two different species of hemilia species which causes rust in coffee this you have to remember for the point of your competitive examination so such kind of question or this question i have seen in many of the competitive examination and one more rust is there that is called as white rust that uh, the uh, species or the genus which causes that white rust is albigo albigo species but this is not under pseudomycotina so this is this is please note down it is albigo species albigo which causes white rust in case of crucifera that also the question most of the question paper you can expect that question also so this is about the different species of paxenia which causes rust in case of wheat as well as the other species or the other genera which causes rust diseases so now let us move on to the systematic position so as i had mentioned in my previous class also the question if it is been asked you have to write about the pathogen the host the disease systematic position symptoms life cycle control measures in the same order it has to be written and i'm going to explain in the same way so now we are going to study about the in detail about the rust disease in wheat caused by paxenia graminis the systematic position or the taxonomy of this particular paxenia graminis goes on like this as we all know this belongs to the kingdom fungi division you mycota subdivision basidio mycotina say so this is why it has been placed under basidio mycotina as i had mentioned before also the organism which has an ability of producing a spore a sexual spore called as basidio spores all those organism has been placed under subdivision basidio mycotina class peleomycetes the organism under basidio mycotina which are found to be parasites which are found to be parasites on the plants they have been placed under the class teleomycetes order uridineales family paxinaceae and the genus and the species which we are going to study for today is paxenia graminis then where do you find this particular disease this particular disease is found all over the world all over the world wherever the wheat has been grown extensively if proper measures have been not followed this this is can spread another important thing here is this is one of a airborne disease so this, i had mentioned before also the disease based on the transmission of the disease you can classify the plant disease as airborne soil borne and seed borne if the the dissemination of the spore happen through that of a air then it is airborne disease through soil if you can find this pathogen in soil then it is soil borne disease if you can find them in seed itself then it is called as what students it is called as seed borne disease so paxenia is one of a what kind of disease it is one of a airborne disease so what are the disease symptom what are the symptoms when you can call the when you can diagnose as a rust disease initially initially the first symptom the first symptom of this rust disease is 
the as we all know since it is a airborne disease the infecting pathogen or a propagule can infect any of the aerial part of the plant it can infect either a stem or a leaf or an inflorescence etc any of the aerial part of the plant it infects another important thing you have to note down they are species specific they are host specific see for example paxinia graminis cannot come and infect our uh, apple plant or sapota plant or cucurbits so they are species specific they are specific to their host so once it come in contact with that of a wheat plant the infecting propagule which has been disseminated through wind once it come in contact with any part of the plant either as i was mentioning any stem or a leaf or a inflorescence inflorescence nothing but the the flowering region the group of flowers are called as inflorescences so any part if it come in land it can enter inside and they cause they can cause the disease so what symptom you can find initially the first symptom is the formation of brown pustule on the stalk or on the leaf or the the leaf sheath or on the infected part that is you can see such kind of elongated elongated pustules or blisters which containing which contain thousands of spores in each of the pustules called as urodospores where in each pustules you can find the formation of a particular spore called as what urodospores urodospore for and the color of this urodospore it is reddish brown in color because of this particular color which it is forming hence this disease is called as rust disease so the first symptom is formation of reddish brown pustules or blisters on the infected part of the plant and these pustules contain what urodospores a group of urodospores are called as urodosori that i am going to talk in the life cycle next symptom later what happen to these pustules these spores which have been formed which has been formed on the infected part of the plant they can get disseminated through wind in the same region the same part of the leaf later what happen the development of teleospores that is in the same pustule what happen the pustule become blackish in color why it is becoming black in color because of the accumulation or the development of one more kind of spore called as teleospores or teleospores teleospores forms in the same sori hence the color of this particular pustule turn blackish this is our second symptom why it is turning black because of one the possible thing is the weather weather change the stereospores which has been formed they are dormant spores can withstand higher temperature also because of that reason the teleospore formation happen in the same lesions or in the same pustule where actually the urodospore would have formed so the first symptom is formation of such brownish pustules because of the formation of urodospores the second system is the same pustule reddish pustule become black because of the development of what teleospores or teleospores the color of the teleospores are black in color that is the reason the symptom will also be the formation of black color uh, pustules the next symptom once all this are happening the entire plant the entire plant would have uh, got infected which leads to the wilting or the drying of the entire plant as well as the inflorescence you could see in this particular images even the inflorescence inflorescence is the region where actually the wheat formation would have has to happen because of the death of the tissues of the aerial part of the plant and also because of the infection on to the inflorescence also the grain formation may not happen which results in the drying of the entire plantation happens so which is a great economical loss for the farmers then coming to this is very much important coming to the life cycle so you people understood about the symptom 
three important symptoms you can find. One is the formation of reddish brown pustule followed by blackish pustule and the wilting of the entire part of the plant and no grain formation. These are the major symptoms on the wheat plant. Now, coming to the life cycle of Paxenia graminis. So if the question is asked for 10 mark, then you have to talk about the life cycle. If it is only for five marks, need not have to tell about the life cycle. You can just elaborate these kind of spores have been formed. Need not have to elaborate the entire life cycle if it is five marker or less than that. Okay, so if it is a 10 marker question, you have to elaborate the life cycle of Paxenia graminis. So before going in detail about the life cycle of this Paxenia graminis, let us study about this organism. This is one of an organism which is called as heterosseous parasite. What is, what is the meaning of this heterosseous parasite? This is a kind of parasite which requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle. Once again, I will repeat, you have uh, parasites can be classified into two kinds. One is heterosseous parasite and autosseous parasite. Hetero, autosseous parasite, they require a single host is enough to complete its life cycle. Whereas heterosseous parasite, it requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle. Say for example, our uh, uh, malaria, malaria disease causing plasmodium vivax, isn't it? Plasmodium vivax, it requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle, which are those two different hosts. One is human, the other one is female Anopheles mosquito, isn't it? So it requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle. Hence, they are called as heterosseous parasite. Likewise, even this Paxenia is a heterosseous parasite because it requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle. Important for your competitive examination, which are those two hosts? One is a primary host, a primary host called as wheat. Wheat is the primary host. Alternate or a secondary host, secondary host is Barberi. Barberi vulgaris is a botanical name of this barber. So, which are the two different hosts? One is a primary host, a secondary host, or alternate host. So, wheat is a primary host where, where you can come across three different phases of life cycle in wheat. Whereas in Barbary, you can come across two different phases. And this phases are important, commonly asked question in your competitive examination. Once again, I will repeat, Paxenia graminis is a heterosseous parasite. Why it is heterosseous parasite? Because it requires two different hosts to complete its life cycle, which are the two different hosts. One is a wheat plant, other one is a Barbary's. We, uh, uh, then another important thing, there are two different phases, phases in the life cycle of this Paxenia, dikaryotic phase and a monokaryotic phase. What is the meaning of this dikaryotic phase? Di means two, carrion or karyotic means presence of two nucleus, the mycelium of this Paxenia, if it is found in wheat plant, the mycelium is dikaryotic. Each cell in the mycelium has got two nucleus. Hence, it is called as dikaryotic. Monokaryotic, if, if the mycelium having the cells, each cell has got single nucleus. Such kind of mycelium can be observed in Barbary. So, there are two different hosts. One is wheat, other one is Barbary's. Wheat in wheat, the kind of the life cycle is dikaryotic phase, whereas in Barberis, majorly it is monokaryotic phase. Another important thing which we have to note down before going in detail about the life cycle of Paxenia graminis is you can come across four different spores. Four different spores can be observed in the life cycle of Paxenia graminis. 
or you can also called as stages they will ask in your competitive examination to arrange the different stages stages during the life cycle of paxenia graminis the first stage is uridinal stage uridinal stage it's called as uridinal stage because of the formation of the spore called as uridospore so these are the uridospores uridospores elongated binucleated spores they are uridospores they are single celled spores then telial stage telial stage even this you can observe in wheat plant the telial stage they are these spores are dormant spore thick walled spore black in color they are two celled it is made up of two cells each of the cell is dicaryotic in nature so all this any kind of spores can be asked for one marker in your university examination teliospores it is also called as teliospores third phase or third stage is basidiospore basidiospore teliospore germinate and produces basidiospores that is the third stage all these stages uridinal stage telial stage basidial stage can be observed in wheat plant can be observed in wheat plant however basidiospore formation is a transitional stage once the teliospore is being disseminated or if it falls on the soil or somehow they have an ability of producing basidiospore so the basidiospore need not have to be present inside the wheat plant however in wheat plant you can come across two different spores dicaryotic spores uridospores teliospores the next stage is basidiospores the fourth stage is pycnidiospores or pycniospores so this spore can be observed in alternate host which is the alternate host barberries barberries once the infection happened onto the barberries you can come across one more kind of spore called as pycniospore or they are also called as spermatia they are also called as spermatia or pycnidiospore or pycniospores the last stage is the acidial stage or the formation of acidiospores acidiospore formation happen in case of barberries once again i will repeat the different kinds of spores in the same order it has been formed starting from the primary host till at the completion of the life cycle in case of barberries the first stage is uridinal stage it's the spore which is being produced is uridospores uridospores the second stage is telial stage and also we were uh, studying about uh, the systematic position and uh, the symptoms of this particular uh, uh, this is where the paxenia graminis causes and also we started with the study of the life cycle of this paxenia graminis where we define about the properties or the characteristic feature of this paxenia graminis where we all know it is one of a heterocious parasite what is the meaning of heterocious parasite these are the parasites which require two different hosts to complete their life cycle the two different host for this paxenia species are wheat is the primary host and barberries or barberry vulgaris is a alternate or the secondary host that you have to remember so and uh, the uh, life cycle of this paxenia graminis has got two different phases one is dicaryotic phase and a monokaryotic phase the meaning of this dicaryotic phase is the cells of this fungi has got two nucleus in them hence such a fungi or such a mycelium is called as dicaryotic mycelium dicaryotic phase can be observed in case of wheat monokaryotic phase where the cells in the mycelium has got a single nucleus in them hence they are called as monokaryotic mycelium where you can find this particular phase in a alternate host the alternate host is the alternate host is or the secondary host is barberries and to complete the life cycle paxenia graminis has to produce five different kinds of spores or 
five different stages can be observed in the life cycle of Paxenia graminis. The first phase is called as kindly note down. It is in the same order. They will ask you to, to match the order. You have to write in which order these spores are being produced. Or in your Bangalore University exam, any of these spores can be asked for either a single mark question or a, a three marker or two marker question they may ask. So the first kind of spore or the first stage which you can uh, come across is uridinal stage. They were in this particular stage, uridospores, these are uridospores, uridospores are produced. So these uridospores, they are orangish in color because of the formation of that particular spore, the symptom on this particular plant is also what? Orangish or brownish, brownish powdery mass, which you can find on the infected part of the plant. The next stage is telial stage. It's also called as here in this particular stage, you can come across the spore called as teliospore. They are also called as teliotospores. They are also called as teliotospores. Uridospore are single celled. Sorry, they are single celled made up of two nucleus and it is elongated. Whereas Teleospores or teleotospores, they are black in color, they are thick walled, they are made up of two different cells. Each cell has got a two nucleus inside them. And the teleotospores are the one which produces a spore called as basidiospore. That we are going to study how actually these basidiospores are formed in my next slide. The, uh, the fourth stage is called as Pycnidial stage, where in this pycnidial stage, pycnidiospores or pycneospores or spermaceums are produced, where you can come across this kind of stage in barberries. And the last stage is called as acidial stage. They produce in this particular stage, the spores which are produced is called as acidiospores where these two spores are produced, pycnidiospores and acidiospores are produced in barberis. However, uridospores, teleotospores or teleospores are produced in wheat. Basidiospores are produced from teleospores. So these are the three or five different stages and the five different spores which you can come across in Paxenia graminis. Once again, I will repeat, Paxenia graminis is a parasite which requires two hosts to complete its life cycle. It has got two different phases in its life cycle, dikaryotic phase and the monokaryotic phase. And there are five different stages where these stages has been classified based on the spores they produce. Uridinal stage, telial stage, acidial stage, pycnidial stage and acidial stage. So these are the different stages and the spores they produce respectively. Now, coming to the life cycle of this Paxenia graminis, as I had mentioned before also, there are two different hosts to complete the life cycle of Paxenia graminis. One is wheat, one is wheat, the other one is, other one is barberries. Barberries, these are the two different uh, hosts required for the Paxenia to complete its life cycle. And there are three different, I mean, two different phases as I, have, I was mentioning, that is dikaryotic phase. So the year in wheat plant, you can come across dikaryotic phase. In case of barberries, it is monokaryotic phase, monokaryotic phase. The spores which are produced from the barberries from SEM is called as SEOspores or acidial spores. Only those spores are dikaryotic. They are dikaryotic, remember. So first, let us start how actually, so now you understood there are two different hosts. One is wheat, other one is barberries. And there are five different spores which are involved. One is SEO spores, SEO spores. Other one is uridospore, uridospore. Then you have teleospore basidiospores and pycnidiospores. These are the five different spores. The primary source of infection, the primary infection 
as I was mentioning, is through air. As I had told you also, it is one of our airborne diseases. This is one of our airborne diseases. The primary infection happen through a spore, dicaryotic spore, dicaryotic spore called as ACO spores. From where this ACO spores have been formed? From the alternate host called as barberries. Barberries plant has an ability of producing the spore called as SEO spore. I will tell how actually this SEO spores are produced and all. Now, just remember that SEO spores are the first source of, or the first source for the infection of a healthy wheat plant, where it has been formed from the barberries. At the lower surface of the leaf of the barberries, such kind of, there are some acidial cup. From this acidial cup, SEO spores are produced. Remember, these SEO spores, you can see this particular spores also. They are, how many nucleus are there? There are two nucleus in this SEO spores. These SEO spores, once they get disseminated through wind, once it land on the proper host, the host is our wheat plant, they germinate. This SEO spore germinate. They produce germ tubes. You can see the germ tube. They enter into the host tissue. They enter into the host tissue. Any aerial part of the plant it can be. They enter into the host tissue through stomata. I think you can see there is a natural opening they have shown in this particular diagrammatic representation. They enter the spore, germinates, produces what? This tube-like structure is called as germ tube. Through this germ tube, it enters into the host tissue. Once it enters into the host tissue, they are found to be intercellular. In my last class, I told intercellular means the mycelium is found in between the cells. They are found in between the cells of the host. They absorb the nutrition by producing hostorium. They absorb the nutrition by producing hostorium. Later, they enter into the reproductive phase. They enter into the reproductive phase. During that particular phase, what happened? The mycelium just accumulate beneath the epidermis. See, for example, for example, in this image, in this image, this is the transfer section of a leaf. This is a transfer. If you take an infected leaf and if you cut that particular leaf transversely and observe it under the microscope, see, this is the leaf and these are the host tissue. These are the host tissue and this is the outermost layer of the leaf, upper epidermis, lower epidermis. And the upper epidermis of the leaf, this whitish pustules, whatever you are finding over here, they are actually the mycelium. They are the mycelium. See here also you can see, this is a transfer section of the leaf of lower magnification. So you can see the infection at various point on that particular leaf. See whitish thing, whatever you can find, they are the mycelium of Puccinia graminis. During the process of reproduction, they just accumulate just beneath. See, this is the epidermis, as I was mentioning, upper and the lower epidermis. They go and accumulate at the, at just beneath the upper epidermis and they start producing the spores. They start producing the spores, which are orangish or brownish or reddish in color. So such spores are formed, such orangish or reddish or brownish spores are called as what? Uridospores. And the group of spore, the group of spores are called as what? Uridosori. Once such uridosori have been formed, such uridosori has been formed just beneath the epidermis, because of the lack of space just beneath the epidermis, what happens to the epidermis? Epidermis ruptures. The epidermis ruptures and all the spores which have been formed, they are exposed. Once they have been exposed, you can see the initial symptom on the surface of the leaf. What you are finding over here, the symptoms on the leaf, you can find reddish brown pustules or blisters containing what? Thousands and thousands of uridospores. So such uridospore formation uh, happen soon after the infection. So what is happening to the aerial part of the plant? The entire aerial part of the plant is getting infected and such kind of spores are going to form. 
and uh, uh, such that is the reason the disease is called as rust because of the rusty appearance on the infected part of the plant now so once once the infection has happened once the su spore has penetrated and once they establish themselves and they have produced they are producing what what kind of spores they are producing they are producing the uridospores these uridospores as i was mentioning they are they have, they are oval in shape they are binucleated and it has got a stalk and the spores are ornamented they are spinous if you observe it i will show you in my next slides also if you see those spores under microscope you can see some some spine like structures those are nothing but the ornamentation on this particular uridospores these uridospore can infect the wheat plant healthy wheat plant and the cycle can continue see the uridospore is full of uridospore and these uridospores can disseminate see it has got a stalk and a oval shaped structure and it is two nucleated and it has got the ornamentation and it is two wall layer it is made up of two wall layer outer wall is called exine and the inner wall is called as intine okay so this uridospore once it get disseminated through wind it can infect the healthy wheat plant and the cycle can continue so later what happens to this particular sori this uh, once all the uridospore formation has happened once all the uridospores have got disseminated through wind by that uh, 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 the temperature would have been also little more higher where the uridospore cannot tolerate that particular temperature so the same region in the same sori one more kind of spore formation happen that particular spore is called as what teleospore or teleutospores it's also called as teleutospores or teleospores in the same region wherever the pustules were reddish brown in color wherever it was reddish brown in color the entire region become black like this that infected plant become black why it the, they are black in color because of the formation of the spore in the same sori wherever the uridospores have been produced where the teleospore form or the teleospore formation happen so because of the formation of this teleospore this teleospore is blackish in color it is thick walled it is two celled it is spindle shaped such teleospore which has been formed and it is dormant can withstand higher temperature also at that particular stage you can find the symptom what kind of symptom the formation of blackish pustules on the infected part of the plant as well as on the inflorescence or as well as on the grain in flowers etc any part of the plant the entire plant would have become black at the same time since all the host tissue would have been destroyed the plant become wilt and it will dry and the entire plantation looks as though they have been dried up and the wheat formation also would have not happened hence it is a great economical loss for the planter and this teleospore over winters that is they have an ability of tolerating any unfavorable condition if such the plant debris if it is found in the soil if if it is retained in the soil what happen this teleospore on set of favorable condition the favorable condition obviously the low temperature lower the temperature the teleospore start germinating the teleospore start germinating it germinates germinates and also you have to note down that the each of the cell in this teleospore are dikaryotic and they are genetically different you can see the, the it is genetically different they each of this nucleus in each of the cells they undergo a process of karyogamy they undergo a process of karyogamy to form a diploid cell this teleospore or teleospore germinate it germinates you can see the germ tube they germinate to produce promycelium so the teleospore germinate to produce promycelium later what happens to the nucleus in this particular cell which has undergone the process of karyogamy they undergo a process of meiosis they undergo a process of meiosis and and 
the nucleus which has undergone the process of meiosis they enter into this promycelium they enter into the promycelium later this promycelium produces basidiospores they produces basidiospore of different strain it is different strain because the nucleus are genetically different you can find positive strain and the negative strain basidiospores so the basidiospores are haploid and they are the basidiospore is monokaryotic once this basidiospore has been formed and this basidiospore cannot infect the wheat plant it the, even the teleospore cannot infect wheat plant the teleospore the purpose of the formation of the teleospore is for the formation of this basidiospores once this basidiospore have been formed only the basidiospore has an ability of infecting the barberries neither the teleospore or the iridospore has an ability of infecting barberries only the basidiospore which has been formed from the teleospore has an ability of infecting the barberries once the basidiospore has been formed from the teleospore these basidiospore get disseminated through wind they get disseminated through wind once it come in contact with barberries the cycle continues if there are no barberries the cycle may get discontinued so the the life cycle cannot happen hence once the basidiospore come in contact with the barberries aerial part of the plant because they are airborne once it come in contact with that of a barberries they germinate enter into the host tissue and they produces a cup like structure a cup like structure called as pycnidium see so this flask like structure which has been formed see for example this is a transverse section of this barberries see here i have put one image of barberries where it is showing some infection on the upper epidermis remember on the upper ep this is upper epidermis and this is the lower epidermis upper side and the lower surface of the leaf on the upper epidermis of the leaf you can find some flask like structure called as pycnidium or it is also called as spermogonium this pycnidium produces haploid spermatium it produces spermatium it is also called as pycnidiospore these pycnidiospore which has been formed they undergo a process of fusion with that of a opposite strains of either a pycnidiospore or the mycelium to form a dikaryotic mycelium this dikaryotic mycelium germinates germinates they enter into the lower epidermis of this of this barberries they enter into the lower epidermis of the barberries again they produces one cup like structure at the lower epidermis of the leaf that cup like structure is called as acium or acidial cup in this particular image you can find some reddish color reddish color cup like structure which has formed at the lower surface of the leaf those are called as acidial cup where this acidial cup pinches out or produces thousands and thousands of spores those are called as acidiospore or acidiospores these acidiospores they are dikaryotic these acidiospore once they get disseminated through wind if it come in contact with that of a wheat plant they enter inside the wheat plant germinate reproduces by producing uridospores these uridospores can spread to the healthy plant and eventually they produces teleospore teleospore produces basidiospores basidiospore again infect the barberries where you can again due to the infection spermogonium or pycnidium formation happen where in this pycnidium spermatiums are produced these spermatium they can fuse with the haploid mycelium and the the uh, and what happens the dikaryotic mycelium happen due to the cytogamy and the delayed karyogamy to form a dikaryotic mycelium this dikaryotic mycelium germinates reaches the lower epidermis and produces a cup like structure called as acidial cup or acium this acium produces large amount of aco spores these aco spores again infect the wheat plant and the cycle continues so this is about the life cycle of paxinia graminis
and this is i think this is this image i have put because uh, easy to write in your uh, examination see it is very easy where you can uh, show that the acdl cup from your uh, barberries producing seo spore infect the wheat plant in the wheat plant what happened uridospore formation happen where the same region telium or teliospore formation happen and uh, karyogamy happen inside the stiliospore which leads to the formation of basidiospores this basidiospore infects barberries and at the low upper epidermis of the barberries you can see the formation of pycnidium and this pycnidium produces pycnidiospore or spermatium where this formation can fuse with the the opposite strain of the mycelium and they are involved in the formation of dikaryotic mycelium this dikaryotic mycelium can germinate and reaches the lower epidermis produces acidium where this acium produces seo spores again this seo spore can infect the wheat plant and the cycle continues i think this image is easy for your examination but this particular image is having lots of labeling and all easy to uh, uh, recollect uh, if you use this particular image i feel this also looks good you see whichever is comfortable for you all uh, students you can represent that in your examination so just i am not i'm not going to elaborate this uh, different kinds of spores it's not required for you all just i am showing some diagrammatic representation of this different uh, types of spores which you can come across in paxinia see the first spore is what rhodospores as i was mentioning it is elongated or oval in shape made up of two nucleus has got two wall layer exine in type and it has got a stalk and also i told it is ornamented this is scanning electron micrography of uridospore and the symptom once this particular uridosora is forming the symptom on the wheat plant is orange ish brown pustule carrying large amount of uridospore and this is the teliospore teliospore as i was mentioning it is spindle shaped two celled each cell has got two nucleus at that particular stage the symptom is the formation of blackish pustule and this is the uh, water amount of the teliospore you can see how thick walled it is and these teliospores uh, or teliospores are involved in the formation of basidiospore how this basidiospore are formed during favorable condition this is the teliospore actually they undergo process of karyogamy later they germinate to produces epibasidium or promycelium the uh, later the nucleus undergoes meiosis all four nucleus enter into this germ tube or epibasidium followed by pinching out of basidiospores so this is the microscopic view of the uh, teliospore the germ tube and you can see the formation of the basidiospore these are the basidiospores which have been formed from teliospores and these are some of the pycnidiospores on uh, our barberries the as i was mentioning on the upper epidermis you can see the formation of cup like structure called as pycnidium these are actually the pycnidium if you take a transverse section and if you observe it under the microscope you can see flask like structure like this and which they produces Uh, uh the uh, spore called as formation or pycnidiospores and this is acidiospore the acidiospore where you can come across the lower epidermis of this barberries see uh, uh, when the barberries get infected once the pycnidium is forming such kind of reddish brown lesions or cup like structures are been forming if you take a transfer section of that particular cup like structure you can find something like this and you can see the formation of seo spores seo spore formation is happening see you can this is how the diagrammatic representation is this is this is upper epidermis of the leaf and this is the lower epidermis of the leaf upper epidermis you can find what uh, you can find the the pycnidium at the lower epidermis is a acium or acdl cup from acdl cup you can see the formation of many what seo spore or acdo spores so this acidio spores can infect the wheat plant and the cycle continue so how to control this particular disease using of this is important for your examination use of disease resistant varieties 
Many disease resistant varieties of wheat against this rust has been already formulated, already produced, uh, which I have listed out over here, HD2009, HD2204, HD2135, HD2278, Sonalika, WH147. These are some of the disease resistant varieties which has been produced. The other method is crop rotation. Crop rotation, you know, what is the meaning of this crop rotation? You, if you are growing wheat in this particular season, next season you can grow some groundnuts or some other things. Where also the, the fertility of the soil increases if you are grow, growing some legumes. So, the, uh, so the, there will be uh, no contact of this particular pathogen with that of a wheat. Hence, farmer usually grow for crop rotation. Crop rotation is one of the best method to control the disease. And another method is destruction of collateral or alternate host. That is Barbary's plant. If there is Barbary's plant, then only the cycle continues. So if you are going to disrupt that Barbary's plant, so the cycle may get discontinued. Proper irrigation, proper irrigation, proper manuring, chemical treatment, chemical treatment, chemical treatment using of fungicides. The different fungicides we can, which we can use for this particular disease are Dithane, Zinab, Actidon. Use of sulfur compounds. All this has to be written in your examination. Use of sulfur compound. Say for example, sulfur hydrazine, sulfur pyrazine, sulfur pyridine. These are some of the sulfur compounds which has been used extensively to control this rust disease. And also you can use the low concentration of naphthoquinones and phenols, which also exerts fungicide activity. Hence, students, these are the different methods where we can use these methods to control the disease. One best method is use of disease resistant varieties. Uh, and another thing which I would like to tell is there are some varieties of this vaccinia uh, uh, where UG99, it is called as UG99. This is one of the variety which of vaccinia which was first for, I mean, recently, recently in the sense in 99, this particular uh, uh, pathogen of vaccinia has been identified this particular uh, pathogen has, is being found to resistant to any or any of i mean wheat whichever they had grown the resistant varieties uh, before the scientist had produced this variety that is ug99 remember ug99 white is called as ug uganda in uganda in year 99 this particular variety i mean this particular uh, paxenia variety was identified it is found to be uh, i mean whichever the plant is found to be resistant even they it has an ability to infect that plant also such varieties are also coming up uh, so uh, there are some uh, where uh, we have to uh, go for uh, some research to control uh, this particular disease also uh, this particular especially the variety which is found to be resistant um, uh, to i mean uh, such resistant varieties has to be uh, formulated or produced uh, being a genetics or a biotechnologist or a microbiologist uh, uh, students. Okay, so these are some of the methods where in which we can control the disease. One is use of disease resistant varieties, crop rotation, destruction of alternate host, proper irrigation, proper manuring, and use of dithane, zinab, actidon, sulfur compounds, naphthoquinones, and phenols. These are some of the fungicides which we can use. So this is about the control measure of uh, this particular disease.